What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and welcome to the build guide of Xeon, the $650 gaming and productivity PC. If you guys missed the original video where I go over the editing and gaming benchmarks, then I'll go ahead and leave a link to the video down below for you. So in this video, I will show you step by step on how to build yourself a badass PC with a fresh installation of Windows. All you're going to need for this build is a screwdriver and I recommend picking up some petri dishes so it helps you with organizing your screws so you don't lose them. I'll go ahead and link a few options down below for you. One thing to keep in mind when building your PC is to constantly touch the metal part of your case so you can ground yourself and not build static which can potentially damage the parts. Alright so step one is to lay your PC sideways with the side panel off and open up your motherboard box and remove the motherboard, IO shield and SATA cables. First thing we're going to install is the CPU so go ahead and remove that from the box and go ahead and pop open the socket cover on the motherboard by pressing down on the lever and pulling it away from the hook. Whatever you do, do not touch the center of the CPU and instead grab it from the sides carefully. Make sure to match the gold triangle of the CPU to the triangle located on the socket cover and gently rest the CPU down. It should easily fall in place, do not force the CPU down no matter what you do. Make sure that the hinges on both sides of the socket align correctly with the CPU. Next you are ready to close the hatch, so gently lower the cover and press down on the lever and tuck it under the hook. If you do it correctly, the back cover will snap off which is perfectly normal, do not freak out. Don't worry if you remove the cover before, it doesn't really make a difference. Now we are going to install the RAM sticks. Pull out the tabs on all sides and make sure to align the notches of the RAM with the motherboard before you slide them in. Once you insert them in, make sure to apply pressure using both of your hands equally on each side so that the RAM sticks snap in place evenly. If you do this correctly, the tabs on both sides of the RAM slots should be tucked inside the notches of the RAM sticks. Do the same exact thing for the second RAM stick. Next, we are ready to install the IO shield and the screws in the case, but before we do that, remove all the plastic bags and paperwork from the case and also remove the cables away from the center so they don't interfere with the motherboard. So grab the IO shield which should have been in the motherboard box and position it upright so that the three tiny circles are located on the bottom and install it against the rectangular hole in the back of the case. You may need to mess around a bit here to get it in but an easy way to install the cover is by applying force one at a time on each corner. Keep applying pressure on the corners until the shield snaps in place and you can tell if you did it right if all four corners are sticking out. Next up you will need to grab six of these standoff screws and this is what they look like. You will also need this thumb screw to help install the standoffs. Depending on the motherboard or case you are using you will need to install the standoffs in the correct slots. Now if you're using the same exact parts in this video then these are the locations of the standoffs. A total of six. Next up we are installing the CPU cooler. Now there are two options here. If you didn't buy the optional cooler like I did and instead want to use the stock CPU cooler that came with the processor, then here's what you need to do. You'll need to match the four legs of the cooler with the four holes on the motherboard. You don't need thermal paste since the cooler already comes pre-applied with some. Once you identify the four holes, gently lay the cooler down and once it comes in contact with the CPU, you'll need to apply pressure on the four stands and press them down one by one until they snap in place. Try not to move the cooler while you are doing this. Afterwards, just connect the fan with the header on the motherboard, which should be right next to it. Now if you picked up the EVO cooler, this is how you install it. Grab four of these giant screws that came in with the cooler and lay them aside because you're going to be using them soon. Flip the motherboard gently over and place the back plate of the CPU cooler on the back of the motherboard by matching the two holes with the two screws up top. Now here's the tricky part. Use one of your hands to hold the back plate while at the same time lifting up the motherboard. Use your other hand to install the big screw I mentioned earlier and you will need to wiggle the screw and the motherboard around a bit for it to slide through the bracket. Now it won't be a smooth process. Once it snaps in place, quickly grab a nut and tighten it so it doesn't fall out. Repeat the same process three more times for the other holes. Once all four nuts have been installed, pick up the night tightener or whatever it's called and tighten each one of them up. It came with the CPU and it should be in the plastic tray next to the other screws. Now once all four of the screws are nicely tightened, you can flip over the motherboard back over. Next step is to install the cooler but before we do that, you will need to remove the fan off of it for now. We also have to apply thermal paste to the CPU, so grab the thermal compound that came with the cooler and apply a very small amount in the center. I accidentally deleted my footage of the process, so I'm demonstrating again on another CPU. 
As always, remember that less is more when it comes to thermal paste. Then go ahead and grab the bracket that looks like an X and place it between the cooler and the heat pipes. Once it's inside, expand the bracket and make sure that the knob on the bracket sits inside the hole on the cooler. It should easily fall in place. Once it's in, gently lower the cooler and rest it on top of the CPU. Try not to move it around once it's resting on the CPU. If you must align the screws with the holes, then it's fine to move it slightly. So once it's all aligned, go ahead and start screwing each corner one at a time. Try to go with a crisscross pattern and secure each one of them. Once you are done, tug on the cooler a little bit to make sure it doesn't move around. Now we are ready to install the fan back on the cooler. Make sure you install the fan on the side where the ramp sticks are located for better airflow. Next up, we are ready to hook up the CPU fan, so grab the 3-pin cable from the cooler and insert it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Once you do that, the entire piece is ready to be installed in the case. So grab one side of the motherboard and gently lay it down inside the case, matching the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs in the case. Also make sure the ports are aligned with the IO shield on the side before you continue. Now we are ready to screw in the motherboard and as always go with a crisscross pattern. For example, install one on the top right, then on the bottom left, and then on the top left, and on the bottom right, and so on and so forth. Once all the screws are tightened, you can put the case on its side because we're going to install the power supply next. Remove the sticker from the power supply and put it inside the case with the fan facing downwards. Go ahead and grab four of the power supply fan screws and start screwing them in from the back and make sure that they are all tight before moving on. Next, it's time to install the hard drive, so grab four of the hard drive screws and insert the hard drive in any slot you want with the connection ports facing outwards and the exposed part facing downwards. Once you slide it in, make sure to align the holes before you screw them in. Now, there are two on each side, and although you really only need one on each side, it's always good to secure it with all four. Last part we are installing is the GPU, but first we need to remove the top two PCIe brackets. If you're installing two GPUs, you need to remove the top four instead. Grabbing the GPU from its side, make sure to align the notches on the slots with the notches on the card before you insert it in. Make sure to apply some force to snap it in place. After it's fully seated, grab one of the screws you removed from the PCIe bracket and install it back on the second row to secure the GPU in place. Alright, so if you did everything correctly, this is what your PC should look like so far. Now it's the fun part, connecting the cables to the motherboard, so pay attention closely. The first cable we are connecting is the 24-pin cable. Now you can route it any way you like and hook it up to the motherboard. The slot will be located near the right edge of the motherboard and make sure that the white letters and the numbers are facing towards the right. Make sure the cable is completely inside and that there are no gaps between them. The hook should be fully seated. Next we are going to connect the hard drive, so grab the cable from the power supply that looks something like this. Pick any one of those three connectors and install it in the back of the hard drive. Next you have to connect the SATA cable, so grab the black SATA cable that came with the motherboard and connect one end with the metal clip facing up in the back of the hard drive until it clicks in place. The other end connects to the motherboard right under the 24 pin. I connected it to the number one slot but you can put it in either one of the four. If you're installing an SSD instead or adding an SSD, then the process is exactly the same. Just repeat the process for the SSD. The connections are identical. Now we're going to install the CPU cable. So grab the cable that looks like this and it should say CPU on both the four pin connectors. We're only going to use one and this is really annoying to reach so you may need to have a lot of patience. Locate the 4-pin slot near the top of the motherboard right above the CPU cooler. Yep, that's basically where you have to hook it up to. Now, it would have been easier to connect that first before you install the motherboard in the case, but if you're already here, then you're just gonna have to deal with it. Make sure that the clip is facing upwards and that it's completely inside by applying lots and lots of force. Now we are ready to hook up the PCI cable to power the graphics card. So grab the cable that has the words PCI printed on it and insert it to the side of the GPU with the letters facing upwards. These next set of cables are connected to the case. So grab the cable that has the words HD audio on it and locate the same words on the motherboard. It should be located way on the left side of the motherboard. So go ahead and match the holes of the connector with the pins on the motherboard and slide it in. Next cable you grab should say the words USB on it. So locate the words USB on the board and and do the same thing, just make sure to match the pins and slide it in. Flip the case to the back and you should find a Molex connector hanging from the back and that's for the rear fan of the case and we need to supply power to it. So grab a male Molex cable from the power supply and connect it together. If you guys have an extra fan and want to install it into your case, just simply screw it in wherever you want and connect the cable from the fan into any fan header on the motherboard. They should be labeled either chassis fan or power fan and any one of those will work. Last but not least, we need to connect the power cable and reset button, so grab the set of cables that look like these. 
On the back of the two pin connectors, you will see a tiny triangle and that means that it connects to the positive or plus sign on the motherboard, so keep that in mind. First up is the single positive P LED connector. Doesn't matter which way you insert this one, but it does go in the very first pin located on the top left. Next up is the negative P LED and this goes right next to the positive one we just plugged in. Next up is the power switch for the power button and the HDD LED. The power switch goes into the third slot. The HDD goes directly under the P LED switch and the reset switch goes right next to that. Notice that both of the letters are facing downwards. So that's it guys, congratulations, you put together a gaming PC. See, there's really nothing to it. Take this time to work on your cable management. Since you know where everything connects to, you can simply plug them out and route them any way you want to clean the inside of the PC. Zip ties are your friend, so make sure to use them. Alright, now it's time to install the software. We are going to install a fresh copy of Windows 8.1, and you guys can upgrade to Windows 10 for free later on, so don't worry about that. If you want to use your current hard drive or SSD, then you don't need this setup. Just simply plug it in like we did in the video, and you are good to go. For everyone else, here is what you need to do. Grab a flash drive with at least 16GB of space and plug it into your computer. Then you need to download the installation media from the Microsoft site. I did leave a link to it down below for you. Once you are here, click on the Create Media and it will begin downloading. Once it completes the download process, open up the folder and run the program. Go ahead and pick your language, the edition, and architecture. Everything should match with mine unless you have a different language. Make sure that you selected the Windows 8.1 Pro Edition. Click Next and choose your USB drive. Now in case your USB isn't labeled, you can open up My Computer to double check the label. Mine says USB E so I know that it's correct. Click on next to move on and a prompt should appear stating that the files will be deleted. Make sure you don't have anything important in them before you continue. Click on OK to proceed. Now this process should take some time to download depending on the speed, but once it's complete, it will automatically install the operating system to the USB drive. This can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, so please be patient. Once it's complete, you will get this message stating that the USB drive is ready, but double check that the correct files are installed by opening up the USB drive. You should have a setup.exe file. If you do, then you are ready to go. You guys will need a Windows 8.1 CD key to continue. Now you can get one on your own, or you can get it for much cheaper using the Reddit CD key swapper. But I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description section for that thread. Right now they go for like 25 bucks, which is dirt cheap, and there are many ways to pay for it. But wherever you guys pick one up, make sure to buy the 8.1 Pro Edition and not the standard, since that's the version we installed on the flash drive. Once you have your CD key, we are ready to install Windows on the PC, so go ahead and insert the USB drive in the front of the PC and go ahead and boot it up. It will detect the USB drive and it will take you to the setup screen. Now if you boot up the PC and you get this screen, that means that the PC did not detect your flash drive. So go ahead and hit Ctrl Alt Delete to restart your PC and hit the delete key continuously until you get to the BIOS screen. Once you are here, navigate to the boot menu and check out your boot options. If you only see one boot option and it's not labeled USB, then that means your PC did not detect the USB drive, so you may need to check your connections on the motherboard or try a different USB port on the PC, for example the back. Once you swap ports, restart the PC and hit the delete key once again to go back into the BIOS. Then go ahead and navigate to the boot menu once again and you should see USB on the boot options. If that's the case, then your connections are incorrect for the front panel and make sure that your USB connector is inserted correctly in the motherboard. Exit out of BIOS and let the PC restart again until you reach the setup menu. Follow the instructions until you reach the screen that asks for the CD key. So go ahead and enter the CD key that you purchased here and then click next. When you get to the screen, click on custom and select the partition you want to install Windows on if you have two of them. Otherwise, leave it on default if you have only one and click on next. Let Windows install the files onto your PC and once it's complete, you will get this message. Remove the flash drive and click on OK to restart the PC. Once Windows finishes the installation process, you will reach the screen and then you can go ahead and follow the prompts and finish filling out your info. Once you reach the desktop, it's time to download the drivers. Now, if you guys are connecting your PC via Ethernet cable, then you don't need a wireless adapter. But if you want to connect your PC via Wi-Fi, then you need to purchase this wireless adapter. This one costs only 10 bucks and I'll drop a link down below for you. Just simply insert it inside the USB port and it will automatically give your PC internet access via Wi-Fi. Next, you will need to visit the ASRock website and download the motherboard chipset drivers and I'll go ahead and leave a link to it down below. 
so you will need to download the audio driver, intel driver and the LAN driver. Once they are downloaded, make sure to install them. The next driver is for the graphics card, so click on the other link down below and download the GeForce Experience which will keep your drivers updated. Once the download is complete, go ahead and install it. Once you have all your drivers installed, you are finished. You have a fully functioning gaming and productivity PC. If you guys enjoyed this video or if it was very helpful, please hit that like button and I will continue to do these builds for all of my budget gaming PCs each month. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.